And then we have what Voltaire refers to in his description of the Samothracian rites. The mystery of a brother who was slain by his brethren. And we find in the old mystery rituals the solar emblem, the candidate representing the sun god, passing through a terrible tragedy, a tragedy of betrayal, of assault, of murder, of martyrdom. We find this solar emblem brought forth as a lamb to the slaughter. We find it betrayed. We look back over the history of the world and we begin to understand something of this betrayal. In many of these systems or symbolisms, the betrayal was the result of the action of three persons who were determined to destroy the solar emblem or to usurp the power of heaven. Consider therefore now that the sun god, Kepra or Serapis, ruled over the great sanctuary of wisdom. For in the great library of the Serapium were the talking stones that told the history of the world. Here were the records of ancient times and of the achievements of men, the dreams and hopes that were old even 2,500 years ago. Therefore, Serapis was the symbol, in a sense, of the records of man's progress passed on as a priceless heritage from one generation to another. The record of man's struggle, his uprising out of darkness, and his coming forth by day out of the night of ignorance. And in this sense, the sun deity finally becomes the actual symbol of truth, becomes the figure of a reality, which is the total of essential knowledge. It is therefore quite understandable how the decline and corruption of the mysteries could be considered as an assault upon the body of a god. Just as Serapis was broken from his wonderful pedestal and smashed to a thousand bits, so the ancient system of learning, which was the essential principle of united knowledge, was torn from its ancient sacred footing cast down, destroyed, broken, scattered by the embodiment of three powers of darkness, powers that we call ignorance, superstition, and fear. It is the ignorance of the mass, the superstitions of false faith, and the fear of temporal power. These are the things that gradually corrupted and destroyed the great institutions of learning, martyred the teachers, crucified, poisoned, murdered, until the wonderful system of mystery initiation was no more, destroyed and corrupted, so that the temple was brought down like the house of the Philistines, and Samson, the sun god, died in the destruction of the house which he pulled down with his own hands. So the house of wisdom, when it fell, carried the symbol to darkness with it, but also resulted in the fall of the house of the Philistines. And the world that has mutilated, defamed the mysteries is now itself weakened, darkened, living in fear and doubt living in moral and ethical uncertainty, wandering in a darkness, knowing not what direction to turn, still proud of its worldly wisdom, but afraid of darkness and afraid of its own sleep.
religion and philosophy, particularly in recent centuries, man has become too important. He has become important in a self-centered way. He has become too egotistically significant. And in the emphasis upon himself, he has failed to emphasize his relationships with the larger world of which he is a part. Until he has proper perspective, he cannot cooperate adequately with any purpose greater than his own personal interest. Now today even we recognize larger purposes. We recognize such desirable ends as world peace. We hope to see ultimately the end of poverty. We would like to see universal enlightenment. We would like to have a factual statement of human equality. We look for the time when prejudice and intolerance will cease, and that the individual will live in a better kind of world. He cannot attain these ends, however, unless he becomes conscious of the machinery of progress, and unless he becomes willing to adjust his own personal desires with those larger motions by means of which collective goods of one kind or another can be recognized, realized, attained.